Good morning, and welcome to All Souls Catholic Church in Sanford, Florida for our celebration of Holy Mass. We also welcome those of you who join us today via live stream. Please see the bulletin for more information on most of our announcements. If you call All Souls your home parish, but have not registered as a parishioner here, please do so by going to the parish website ASCCSanford.org and find Register to become a member on the homepage. You may also pick up a registration form at the welcome desk in the narthex or by visiting the parish office during regular business hours. Registration in the parish is necessary for our clergy and staff to be able to provide you documentation such as sacramental records and letters of good standing for weddings and baptisms 
as well as benefits such as discounts on Catholic school tuition. Please also inform the parish office if your address, contact information, and or marital status has changed so we can keep our records up to date. The One Blood Big Red Bus is here today until 1 p.m. for our bi-monthly blood drive sponsored by the Knights of Columbus. If you can, please stop by and give the gift of life. As we enter into divine worship, please take a moment to ensure your cell phones and other electronic devices are silenced. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Our Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Sonia Cortez. Our celebrant is Father Jeremiah Payne, and our homilist is Deacon Stephen Gross. Our entrance hymn can be found in the Green Book at number 445. That Easter day with joy was bright, number 445. Let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water He has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May He help us by His grace to remain faithful to the Spirit we have received. O Lord our God, in Your mercy be present to Your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and still the greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water, for You created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of Your mercy, for through water You freed Your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant You were to enter into upon the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupt nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. I'm back after this. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this most holy Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. <clears throat>
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been reborn, by whose spirit they have been washed, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but that they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father 
loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. <clears throat> Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. <coughs> Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, 
My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm the new guy. That's what they call me. My wife is the new wife for me. No, I'm just kidding. She's been my wife for 45 years. She keeps following me around. It's been great, though. <laughs> so, Shalom Alehim, better known as Peace Be With You in English language. It's a greeting, or can be a farewell. It's shortened a lot of times to just Shalom. But it means more than having, not having a disturbance. In other words, I'm, I have peace. Nobody's trying to put me in danger. But it means more than that. It means, it means love. I love you. I, want you. I wish you the best. Here's my greeting. I'd like to just take one second and say thank you. Because this parish, especially over this past week and this weekend, has shown us peace, my wife and I. And we are very grateful for that. It's not easy moving parishes as a deacon. You have to learn all kinds of different things and whatever the case may be. But we have been grateful that uh, you have all been so welcoming. And thank you so much. So this weekend, we celebrate the second week of Easter, but we also celebrate divine mercy. The Greek word for mercy is elios. It can be translated to mean something more than what we would think of as mercy, meaning that instead of giving you punishment, we won't. It's a different kind of mercy or more kind of mercy. It can be also be a tender compassion or compassionate, loving kindness type of mercy. So we hear the disciples this week locked in a room, frightened, lonely, unsure, wondering what's next, and I don't blame them, I would be too. They have doubt about what's going to happen now. Because remember, they've been through a very emotional Last Supper with their mentor, their savior, their everything, has just told them that he's leaving for the last time. They had the agony in the garden, and what happened in the agony? The apostles fell asleep. And more. They had betray, a, a betrayal of one of their own. Judas betrayed Jesus. And among the other things are they had the three denials of who was supposed to be taking the reins, and that was Peter. So when the leader has doubts, sometimes everybody has doubts. At least he displayed that he had doubts. But in the upper room, Jesus appeared not with punishment, not with dead reckoning of something that was unknown how to get there, but with love, grace, forgiveness, divine mercy. Because he appeared to them with the same words that I just used, and that was, peace be with you, and said it more than once. And then to alleviate any of their doubts, or try to, he showed them his hands, his side, so forth, in a divine act of mercy again. The key word is they had doubt. And then that brings us to the next person, who is probably one of the most popular persons as an apostle, only because he is doubting, doubting Thomas. Thomas is interesting. He's very, very, very seldom quoted, if hardly at all, in the Synaptic Gospels. We don't know much about him. 
we know that he was, has some role to play in John and, and one in act. I think he's mentioned there. But there's a reason why they call him Doubting Thomas, because he had a doubting character. It's interesting, though, that we don't know much about Thomas. We have been told that he traveled his mission down to India. He helped spread the news of the gospel and build some churches. And he has interactions other place in the gospel. He, for instance, he said, let's go die with Jesus when he's going to go to Jerusalem. But in reality, we don't know much about Thomas other than doubting Thomas. And I like to tell people, my father used to have things, two things he said to me all the time. Well, it depends on how good I was being, but maybe more than that. But he would say, you don't hate anything or anybody, and don't be a doubting Thomas. Now, when I was a kid, I had no idea who doubting Thomas was, to be honest with you. But I quickly learned, especially when he picked me up and said, you're going to kneel at Mass, son. Yes, I will. So I kind of grew up pre-Vatican II, and it was, some things were pretty strict, but that's okay. So then the next thing I wanted to bring up as another reflection on a doubt is this, who we're celebrating today in Divine Mercy, and that's St. Faustina Kowalski. She was born in 1905, died in 1938. She only lived 33 years, but she had an astounding impact on the world. And that was through God's intercession, God's messages, God's visions, Jesus' mission, mission, missions with her. You see, St. Faustina entered religious life at age 20. But she was heavily involved with her congregation, her sisters, if you will. And then Jesus asked her, appeared and asked her to start writing things down. He was about ready to tell her. And over the next four years, she did that. Her, she wrote the famous diary, Secretary of My Most Profound Mystery. And she said, he said, I should say, know that your task is to write down everything that I make known to you about my mercy for the benefit of those who reading these things will be comforted in their souls and will have the courage to approach me. So what's interesting about St. Faustina that people may not realize is that she was a doubting person as well. Even when Jesus started speaking to her and asking her to write things down, she was a doubting person. It was tough. She's also suffering. She ended up passing away, we believe, from tuberculosis. But what's interesting even more about St. Faustina is this, and a lot of people don't realize this, some do. St. Faustina was filled with so much doubt that when her spiritual advisor, director, went away for three weeks to the Holy Land and left her, if you will, naked spiritually, the devil attacked her, took advantage of her, and convinced her through convincing her that he was either Mary or an angel, depending upon which part of that you read, convinced her by being one of them that she should burn everything she just wrote down. Her diaries, her notes, everything. Burn it. Faustina burned it. So when her spiritual director, a priest, got back from the Holy Land, he panicked. And he asked St. Faustina to recreate every one of them. And although she still had doubt, and through intersection, intercession of Jesus Christ, she was able to recreate every one of them. So you see, St. Faustina lived with doubt as well, and a lot of saints did. St. John of the Cross, for instance. So what I'd like to do now is give you the last example of doubt, and that's from the person you're looking at. This is my own admission, but it's a memorable one for me, and I hope it is for you. So many years ago, when I was serving at the cathedral in Atlanta, Cathedral of Christ the King, after Mass in the evening, they had asked me to please, after Mass, go next door, across the big hallway, to a place where there were seated a thousand people, and help say a prayer and get, get things started. So I did. 
As I walked out the side doors of the cathedral, of the church, and I never got but a few steps, maybe halfway across, it was an expansive hallway, and I stopped. Not intentionally, not knowingly. I just stopped. I couldn't walk. It wasn't that my body wouldn't function. It's that I couldn't walk. Something was telling me to stop. I looked at my feet to make sure they were still there, made sure everything was okay, and it was. Then I looked over my right hand shoulder, and I don't know why, but there was an older gentleman, radiant, glowing almost, walking toward me. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do, but I knew he kept walking toward me. As he came to me and approached me, he asked me a question. I couldn't answer him. That was not working either. So being the person he was, he knew what was going on. That person was Father Seraphim Mikolenko, the one person that was responsible to sneak her diary out of communist Poland by taking pictures of her diary. You see, Father Seraphim was one of those commissioned by, he wasn't St. Paul then, John Paul, but he was eventually by St. John Paul II, to basically investigate the miracles that St. Faustina had performed for possible beatification and canonization. He spent over 20 years working full-time doing that, interviewed over 45 people, and saw at least one first-hand miracle himself. So here I am, I have no idea who this guy is. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I doubted, I must have doubted the Divine Mercy and, and St. Faustina because I never really paid any attention to it. So he asked me, finally, and I understood, he said, do you know St. Faustina? I said, I'm sorry, Father, I, I'm embarrassed, but I don't. So over the next, I don't know how long because I can't tell you, he was there. He told me interpersonal relationships he had and told me about St. Faustina. Now, what I want to try to get you to vision is that this man was beyond humble. He was beyond loving. He was beyond mercy. It was like Jesus Christ, through him, was talking directly to me. When he concluded... I pointed in a direction which was only 20 feet away, where he was to go. And as he walked away, the only thing, the last thing I can remember saying is, is don't leave. But for me, that day, oh, excuse me, that day, that time in my life was confirmation that being a deacon was what the Lord wanted me to do. My wife, my beautiful wife of 45 years is sitting right there. And I know when I came home, my wife just looked at me when I walked in the door and said, are you okay? I said, you have no idea. She says, well, you're not talking. I said, I probably won't for a while. <laughs> so, I was doubting. I was doubting divine mercy. But I can tell you, I wasn't after that. So, Pope John Paul II wrote two very important statements about mercy. First he wrote, mercy is love's second name. Secondly, he taught that mercy is the greatest attribute of God. Traditional Catholic moral theology treats, a, treats of the virtue of mercy as flowing from love of neighbor. Very important. Namely, it is that virtue which inclines us to offer assistance to a person suffering from want or misery. You see, mercy is not by itself. Mercy has to have love. And love has to have mercy. 
If I didn't learn anything at all from Father Seraphim, I learned that. I learned what true mercy, true love, true tenderness, true humility really was. When we exchange the sign of peace during Mass, it signifies more than just offering peace alone. It also symbolizes our expression of love and mercy. Love and mercy, again, are inseparable like two sides of a coin. So we are today, on this special day of celebration, specially empowered by his divine mercy. But this special empowerment we get today through confession, through the Eucharist, through ourselves as a community, is to take that same mercy and take it through us and give it to other people. Everybody we talk to. Try to be like Father Seraphim. I've tried for many, many years, and I have failed, but I'm trying. <laughs> but he's, he was unbelievable. But on this particular day, this special day, let's pray that we can dedicate ourselves to that act of kindness, expressing that love, that compassion developed by mercy to all those around us. And if we can, I'll pray that we can fulfill the desires of our Lord Jesus Christ by sharing his merciful glory in our daily lives and those we come in contact with. Amen. Let us stand now and make solemn proclamation of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As sharers in the immense divine mercy of God, who has renewed us with the resurrection of his Son, let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that all people may enjoy the blessings of the new world inaugurated by the Lord's Paschal Mysteries. For the holy Church of God, that with joy and steadfastness she may bear constant witness to the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who suffer, that their sadness may one day be transformed into a joy that no one can ever take away from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may know how to discover and deepen more fully every day in the meeting of our baptism, and of our belonging to the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed on from this life, that through God's divine mercy, <clears throat> they may come to rest in their desired heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the attention for which this Mass is offered, the repose of the soul of Sonia Cortez, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken or unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, who by the death of your only begotten Son on the cross restored to us the ancient dignity of our human nature, hear us, we beseech you, so that those of us who have been born again by water and the Holy Spirit in the fonts of baptism may always preserve the joy of Easter through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our own and all souls of your church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that, renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sings together the unending hem of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and of blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days to your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day before he was to suffer took bread into his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your ministers and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In, humbly, in humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who participate, who th through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and precious blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
<coughs> we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good homily. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini knows to you.
sent my peace be on all here. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. With those distributing Holy Communion to the sick and the homebound, please come forward. My dear Son in Christ, as you go forth from this sacred assembly to bring the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ to the sick and the homebound, go now with God's blessing and everlasting peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this morning we want to give a formal warm word of welcome to Deacon Stephen Gross and his wife, Roxanne, joining our parish, and uh, we pray for many happy years of diaconal ministry with us. We are so blessed to have you, grateful to Bishop Noonan for sending you our way, and we hope that you find here a spiritual home and a place to minister with our wonderful family of faith. So welcome to All Souls, Deacon Stephen. Secondly, for those of you bothered by incense, today is the last day for a little while for incense. This is Easter Sunday on the eighth day. No clapping, it's part of our Catholic tradition. You may not like it, but it's part of our heritage. So I've made a compromise. On most Sundays, we will not use it out of deference to your clapping. But on some Sundays that are major solemnities, we will. So the next times we will use incense is Ascension Sunday, uh, uh, Pentecost Sunday, Corpus Christi Sunday at the end of May, and uh, then Christ the King in November. So put those on your calendar. Uh, we will use incense at those masses, and we thank you for your consideration, uh, both as we consider your needs and then as you consider our ancient customs of worship. Finally, if you are, uh, if you are a child needing your mass passport book signed, uh, since everybody's going to be greeting Deacon Stephen, I want you to write in your passport book, remember this, Stephen, with a PH, Stephen Mercy 47. Stephen Mercy 47, Stephen Mercy 47. And your teacher or your catechist will know you are here today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in the waters of baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be, you, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass has ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our closing hymn can be found in the Blue Book Music Issues section at number 180. Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, number 180.